Elegoo Mars series is a perfect example of how far resin printing has come in the last few years. The first generation was one of the first really low budget LCD 3D printers. The second generation gave us monochrome LCDs. The third generation gave us 4K resolution and the fourth generation, well, why so special? That special three letter acronym you see after its name, DLP, Digital Light Processing. So what does it mean? Well, where regular old LCD printers just have a screen that creates a silhouette of the image to be created, a DLP printer projects the light onto the screen, so there is no LCD at all. Taking the LCD screen out of the equation solves a major problem for LCD printers. This is lifetime. A normal LCD screen lasts around 2000 hours, but the DLP projector lasts 20,000 hours. That's more. If you use your LCD printer, say like every day for 10 hours, that means you will need a new LCD screen in 200 days. And that adds up. So if you're a hardcore resin fiend, then a DLP printer makes sense. Another crazy thing about DLP printers is their low power, 18 watts. That's not really an advantage unless you're very picky with your energy bills, which is perhaps a good thing. But compare it to the heating cartridge on an FDM printer, which is usually 40 watts, it's kind of cool to put that in perspective. But because it's only 18 watts, this thing is quiet, dead quiet. The Mars 3 had a fan in the housing and you can hear it a bit, but this is super quiet. One other disadvantage when it comes to LCD printers is the proximity of the screen to the resin. There's only 0.15 millimeters of FEP separating them. And if that FEP breaks, then resin just gets all over the screen. And LCD screens can be kind of expensive, but this is not really an issue as much with the Mars 4 because there is no screen. Obviously, there is just this tempered glass between the Actronics and the actual resin tank. So worst case scenario, you just have to replace the tempered glass, which is relatively cheap compared to an LCD screen. So this all sounds great. What's the catch? Yeah, there's a catch. So the Mars 4 is a 2K machine. I compare that with the Mars 3 back there, which has a 4K machine. And this is the failing of all DLP printers. You cannot get a 4K DLP printer at this price point right now. Right now, pretty much all LCD printers are 4K, some are 6, some are 8K. Um, but can you notice the difference between the Mars 4's 80 micrometer XY resolution and the Mars 3's 35 micrometer precision? Let's find out. Can you see the difference? This is a close-up of two prints. One is the Mars 3 Pro at 35 micrometer, and the other is the Mars 4 DLP at 80 micrometer. This was printed with the text facing vertically, so we're only focusing on the XY resolution here. The Z resolution, by that I mean the layer height, is the same for both printers, 10 micrometers at the lowest. Can you tell me which one is the Mars 3 and which is the Mars 4? If you want the absolute highest resolution, then perhaps this printer is not for you. But if you're not phased by that previous demonstration that we just did, and you don't want to face the trials of LCD screen replacement every few months, then this printer is a game changer for you. But of course, this is not the first DLP printer to come to market, not even in the same class. We do have another DLP printer, this being the Anycubic Photon D2. So what's the difference? Well, the resolution and build volume are pretty much the same. When it comes to the platform system, it's a little bit different. The Photon D2 has four small screws for tightening the platform, whereas the Mars 4 DLP has the standard Elgu two large screws and that's it. So this is a little more tedious when it comes to leveling the platform, whereas this is straightforward. Same as the Mars 3, very easy to do. This really bothered me when I was testing this machine and I know it is a really tiny issue, but for some reason it is very irritating to me. The Mars 4 also has a sandblasted platform for better adhesion and it comes with a new slicer software. This is Voxel Dance Tango Slicer and they even have a new slicing format. It's .goo. I mean, it's called goo. I love it just for that. Goo. So this is an interesting departure because traditionally Elegoo and lots of other printer manufacturers have used Cheetobox for their slicing needs, but now they're choosing a different third-party provider. So I took a look to see what it offers. So I, I'm very used to Cheetobox and have always way, way preferred it to most manufacturer slicers, but I think Tango Slicer is a bit better for beginners. It has this huge toolbar on top. Uh, it also has a quick access toolbar if you right click because moving the mouse slightly higher takes at least half a second. There is also a paint on support feature, which is very cool if you want to apply supports to one area but not have them in another. Interestingly, it does have some basic CAD features too, such as a Boolean operator and also a mesh reduction tool, which is pretty useful if you have 
a lower end machine and you have a model with a million triangles that is slowing everything down, you can literally just limit the mesh and it becomes a lot more low poly. Pretty cool. The slicer also offers pre-configured profiles for lots of other printers from different brands. So if we go to the platform definitions, we can see printers from the brands Anycubic, Reality, Helico, of course, Flashforge, Longer, and lots more. So you might be a bit worried now thinking, oh, I have a DLP printer, so I need to get a DLP resin and throw out all of my LCD resin. Well, you might be forgiven for thinking that, but DLP printers can use basically any LCD resin. I'm not actually familiar with an LCD resin that cannot be used with a DLP printer. Here's our own eco resin printed at 2.5 seconds exposure, and it came out lovely. And here is our tough resin. So our tough resin has an impact strength pretty similar to ABS, but it still prints beautifully. This is a great choice for miniatures or functional items that may be handled a lot. Well, what if you're printing with something a little higher grade? Well, we have some Licreate Strong X resin here. I've not tested this before, so this should be interesting. It came out lovely. Here we have printed a planetary gear setup. Even engineering grade resin turns out beautifully, which is not always as straightforward with FDA materials. I think we'll have to try the Strong X resin again for an extruder build at some point in the future. It looks so cool. In terms of resin compatibility, I don't think this printer misses anything. Uh, maybe you might have to do a little bit of tweaking with the exposure settings, but for the vast majority of resins, you won't have to change anything. I think the Mars 4 is perfect for those who are doing a lot of prototyping and those who would not want to do a little more maintenance on their printer. But the lower resolution does limit things a bit. But as you saw in our demonstrations, uh, it's not a huge amount and it's not immediately noticeable from the naked eye. But if you are interested in a super high resolution printer, something like the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K would be the best choice for you. But I will absolutely be using this printer for all of my prototyping needs in the near future, uh, instead of the Mars 3, simply because I hate changing LCD screens. And if I can delay that a little more, of course, I'm gonna do that. So if you hate that too, this might be interesting for you. Thank you so much for joining us here today at 3D Jake. We're always here for you if you need a question answered. So drop us a comment or send us an email if you have any questions. If you thought this video was helpful, then drop us a like, subscribe, send us an owl, whatever works. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.